online notarizations. Everybody ready for online notarizations? Excited? Right. You guys remember Kathleen from this morning? Hi. And my name is Brianna Godfrey, and I am with the Texas Secretary of State's office. And the way we're going to break things up today is Kathleen is going to provide you with sort of an overview of electronic notarizations. And then I'm going to provide you with some information on online notarizations. So before we get started, is everybody in here a notary? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you are electronic notaries? Ah, see, that was a trick question. As you guys, when you got your commission, you are commissioned to perform both paper-based and electronic notarizations. Okay, so you guys can already all provide electronic notarizations. However, how many of you are, notar are commissioned as online notaries? We have one over here. A couple, okay. So we have over 435,000 notaries in the state of Texas. As of yesterday, we have 363 commissioned online notaries. So, um, big difference, it was just introduced last year, and so right now we've got 363,000. What we're gonna do today, the goal is to provide you with information on what you need to know um, and the costs that are associated with becoming an online notary so that you guys can make an informed decision about whether or not this is something that you're interested in or not. I'm gonna give you a caveat. We are gonna talk about some technical things. And I think yesterday was a little overwhelming, but we're gonna change it up a little bit today. Um, I want you to understand that when the law was passed, the change to ch uh, chapter 406 of the government code and then the Secretary of State um, administrative rules were changed to allow for online notarization. The goal was to provide you with what the technical, the minimum technical standards are and to make it a vendor neutral standard so that you can go out and talk to vendors and say, these are what the minimum requirements are for Texas and they know whether or not they can fulfill that. But if you guys don't need to be afraid, we're gonna talk about things like PKI and X509 compliance. You don't necessarily need to understand what that technology means. What you need to know is that when you go and you talk to a vendor, you need to say, hey, these are what Texas's requirements are. Can you meet these requirements? And and I think we were talking earlier, there's between 11 and 15 states already that have adopted online notarization. And there's another 20 that are considering it during their legislative session. So this is not something that is unique only to Texas. This is something that notary vendors are out there and they understand what the requirements are and they build applications and platforms that can fulfill the standards that are required by the states, including Texas. So the goal today is just to provide you guys with some information so that if you're interested in it, when you're going out and talking to vendors, you have the information you need to make sure that they can meet the minimum requirements for taxes. Okay? Yes? Is there a state certification that's being offered to vendors? There is not. So some states require that vendors be certified. Texas does not require that. That's why in our rules and in the statute, we just are setting forth the minimum requirements and as long as the vendor can represent to you that they are able to meet those requirements, then there's not a requirement that you go with any specific vendor, okay? Pardon me, but I don't know what you mean by vendor. So, a vendor, um, there, I mean, there's lots of vendors. We've got some of our exhibitors out here, our vendors. Um, and, and, and I would like to address that with, and because I'll use that term today. It's essentially a company that has created the technology that you would use to do these types of notarizations. So we just call them vendors, but you know, everyone who makes an app is a vendor. So we'll just use that nomenclature today. Right. So okay. shall, we, shall we just go ahead and dive in? We should. So Kathleen's going to start out today. Okay, great. Um, so, so great to see you guys and be here to, to have this conversation. And I love what Rihanna said because really this is just a conversation with you guys about making you a little more familiar about what the law says about online 
notarization, electronic notarization. Um, so as she pointed out, I'm going to start off here and try to just lay some of the groundwork, talk about some of the familiar fundamentals of performing any notarial act, no matter how you do it, what means or manner you use. Um, you probably heard me earlier today talk about the assurances of notarization. I want to mention and just hit some of the high points about a typical e-notary toolkit that you'll need. What types of electronic technological tools do you need to perform electronic and online notarizations? And then Brianna's going to pick it up with exactly what she said, just informing you about what the laws require vendors to meet as far as the minimum standards for the technology. So she'll cover things like that and some of the ins and outs of uh, becoming an online notary and getting that commission and the responsibilities of an online notary and um, other administrative rule changes that affect that um, commission. And we have one question here, yes? This might be a silly question, but could you please explain to me what the difference is between the electronic notarization and an online notarization? Well, I must have rehearsed you before this started because we're going to talk about that. <laughs> so I will get into that because it's a, there is definitely a distinction. And I, what we really want more than anything is that because there, is, there are two separate commissions, because there is electronic notarization and electronic notarizations that happen online, we want to make sure you guys are well grounded. So let me just let me just start by diving into my little piece of it here. And first of all, this particular electronic process is new to you, but obviously, because uh, I'm sure all of you are walking around with that, that powerful device we all use, which is a cell phone, we are all deeply experienced in utilizing electronic processes, and we almost don't even think about it. I mean, think about things like Nest thermostats and being wirelessly connected to um, all the, the things that you can do, smart homes and, and things like that. We um, make electronic signatures all the time. We can even do that by just responding affirmatively on a, on a recorded voice transaction by saying yes or no, that can be considered a, an electronic signature. So we're deeply experienced in that. We almost don't, and that was my mic, wasn't it? This, we've been having a little trouble with my mic because I don't have a collar. Hang on. Okay, we're gonna try this again, sorry. Um, at any rate, my point is that e-signatures and electronic processes basically permeate our lives. And e-notarization is less common, but it's one of those things that is absolutely growing in prominence. As, as Brianna mentioned, it, it's been authorized in um, states for years, but it has really started growing in prominence and, and it's rolling down the track. And we just want to make sure that you guys understand, you know, what's involved with that. And another comment I want to make about going into the brave new world of electronic transactions, you know, I mentioned we're already deeply experienced e-users. And think about all the different apps and e-processes that you use. You are not an expert on the technology that makes those apps work. What you do know is, hey, this app works. And now something that I used to have to do manually with different steps, maybe involving paper, I can now do that electronically. I mean, just as a perfect example, think about banking now. We, most of us probably utilize a banking app. That's really what we're trying to convey about this new way of notarizing. So we're going to dive in and <clears throat> try to just clarify all that for you. So first of all, let's Let's talk a little bit about electronic notarization, Texas style. So whether an electronic notarization happens and is carried out by a traditional notary with the signer face-to-face, -face, or it's an online notarization carried out by an online notary, it's still an electronic notarization. But there are um, some similarities and differences in some of the basic requirements. First of all, with um, for both traditional e-notarization and online um, notarization, the primary governing laws and rules that tell you how you're supposed to notarize and the procedures you're supposed to follow apply equally. Because again, a notary is a notary is a notary. The same formalities of the Notarial Act have to be carried out. We do have two separate commissions now. 
And I, I love what Brianna did because it was a great example. You're all authorized to not only perform paper notarial acts, but also electronic notarial acts. And so that would be under the traditional notary public commission. You can obtain, if you have the traditional commission, you are eligible to apply to obtain the online notary commission. Online notaries are performing electronic notarizations, but they're doing it with the signer meeting the personal appearance requirement by appearing online using audio video communications technology in real time. Literally, they're sitting there and you're looking at them on, an, on a monitor and they're looking at you and your conversation is happening in real time. So um, that's how, that's a, a, a key difference between the two. And I wanna emphasize, both forms under Texas law are um, meeting the personal appearance requirement for notarization. It's just with electronic, it's physical appearance of the signer. And with an online notarization, it's interactive two-way audio video. Notarial acts, for both types of commissions, the notary can perform all the acts authorized of a Texas notary. So that's, that's pretty meaningful. I mean, and it really is yet another way that we're illustrating that this is simply another way of performing notarial acts. Um, as far as the technology for um, the electronic notarizations that are performed these two different ways, if it's under the traditional um, notary commission and it's traditional electronic notarization, the technology for accomplishing that electronic notarization is not specified. And I think this is, this is the concept that we've been most concerned about in helping you guys understand. <clears throat> With online notarization, there are definite specified technology minimum standards that are in the law. Those um, specifications are more to ensure that whoever creates the technology has created technology that meets those standards. And again, your knowledge of what those standards are in the statute would enable you to go and say, this is what I have to meet. Can your system do this? And so again, for traditional e-notarization, no technology standards. It's, um, you can use any type of electronic signature as a notary. You can use any type of um, electronic notarization platform, and there are some out there. Any type of electronic platform that lets you conduct these signatures, the technology is not specified. And then you're gonna hear from Brianna how very specified the technology is for online. I, I, I just keep saying this like a mantra, but it's always worth repeating. For electronic notarization, both in presence for the traditional notary and online for the online notary, the same core fundamentals of notarization are occurring. You're, you're going to go through the same formalities of the Notarial Act. Personal appearance, that bedrock principle of notarization that we all have to ensure is satisfied, um, is absolutely satisfied for electronic notarization. And I just mentioned for the traditional notary, that's gonna be a, a physical presence of the signer for a basic paper notarization or electronic notarization, for an online notary, personal appearance is satisfied through the audio, video, real-time connection that you have with that individual. Uh, the same <clears throat> uh, identification requirement is there. Um, what's a little different is for online notarization, there are technological means of affirming the identity of the signer that applies specifically to online. But for electronic notarization and traditional paper notarization, it's the forms of um, identification that you're accustomed to when performing a, a physical presence notarization with a signer. You're always gonna make that comprehension and free will assessment. That's part of what's happening when you're communicating back and forth with, with the signer. And you'll be communicating either physically present or present um, using audio video. There, there will always be a notarial ceremony. There will always be a completed notarial certificate. These are all very familiar things to you. And in both circumstances, whether it's a, um, you know, a traditional electronic notarization, paper notarization, or an online notarization, you must create a notarial record. So 
even as technology changes how we perform notarizations, what is really meaningful is that the fundamentals that we have to satisfy with notarization are consistent. And this is what's really important. If those fundamentals are unchanged, the, the relying parties who are counting on your notarial acts are going to have the same assurances of notarization, no matter how that notarization was performed. So that's something that's incredibly important um, for you to really hang on to, because again, we're just talking about a different way of doing the same thing you've always done. And for you experienced notaries, doing the same thing you've always done and that you know how to do. So it's, it's kind of a brave new world, but we're gonna try to pave the way and, and, and help you with that. Mm. Uh, yes, sir? So the, what I'm hearing, I may have this completely wrong, but those of us who are performing notary services, yeah, I'll, I'll repeat. I'll repeat. Thank you. Are going to have to use the expense of developing the application? Uh, the question was for those who are, to make sure I get this right, for those of you who are interested in going into electronic notarization, online notarization, will you have to bear the expense of developing the applications? I think the answer to the question is. You know, there are going to be expenses with using technology to perform notarial acts because, yes, development of the platforms that enable this to happen, did, it comes with cost. So, yes, we will talk a little bit about the different fees that you can charge for online notarization. And, yes, just be aware that um, doing things differently by doing them in an electronic format can certainly involve more expense to, to get yourself e-enabled. So that's a, a very good question. You know, you said so the overheads increase. Uh, well, if your costs increase, if you if it's overhead to you, then yes. Yeah, I mean, so the answer is yes, we're gonna have to pay for the development of the application. That's the same reason. You're going to have to pay for any increased expenses that may come and so I, I, I want to make sure I'm answering really right. the, yeah, the no, question. I, I mean, I understand, but, but what I'm hearing is that I know we're going to keep the standards the same and all that, mm -hmm. but the obligation to meet those standards within the electronic setting is going to be on us. Okay. Why don't we hit, yeah, right, right. I think that's already there. You just have to subscribe to it. You have to buy it. Right. Yeah, that's your business. Right, and I think I heard a term that was helpful to, to this question. Thank you for, for bearing with no, no, getting no, no, getting no. to the question, which is, is there going to be a business cost? And, you know, I think any time that you innovate, absolutely you can expect a business cost. And, you know, it's just going to be a matter of, is that something that's right for your business model? It's going to be a very personal decision, so thank you. And we're going to need to move on. We'll make sure that we catch your question. But I just want to interject real quick. If you guys have questions, if you'll raise your hand, let's make sure we're using the mic so that everybody can hear the question and then the response. Okay? Yeah. And, and, and when we can't get the mic, we'll do our best to remember to repeat the question and, and make sure that everyone knows what the conversation is about. So thank you very much. Um, I want to back up, yeah, to the fundamentals because I'm having a personal struggle with the free will assessment mm -hmm. because you won't be able to see what else is in the room, you won't be able to feel the vibes, you know, those kinds of things, depending on what the notorial life is for. And I see, coming from a criminal background on myself, from working in the sheriff's department, such as law enforcement, that kind of thing in the past, I just see a real window of opportunity for fraud to be, um, or maybe fraud's not the right word, uh, or acts being taken it's under okay. coercement more easily right. than in person. And that's the struggle that I have with the whole concept. That, and, and it's perfectly understandable because you guys are hardwired to watch for anything that would take advantage of the cyber. The one thing I can say about that, it, it, you know, in, in the entire conversation in the development of remote online notarization, and any time we're looking at doing something differently than it has traditionally been done. There has been a lot of conversation about concerns about exactly what you expressed, coercion. 
What was really interesting to me was it raised a lot of commentary about, well, you know, coercion can happen in ways that are not necessarily occurring inside the room where you're physically present with the signer. And so when you start realizing that coercion can be someone off-site with, you know, a loved one held at gunpoint while the signer is in with you, you know, it, when you start realizing that's how it can happen, then you, you can realize that perhaps if you... Well, I think we're hoping it's even wider. That's my personal... Right, the, con this point. the, con the concern is, is the concern is, well, maybe we're opening it up even more and rather than closing it. I think that, and, and this is what I'll say, and then we'll move on, because it's a, it's a valid commentary and an understandable one. But one thing that does occur in the online environment is the notary is able to use digital tools that actually make some of the things that you do in performing the notarial act strengthened because there are, there are electronic uh, technology processes that are happening that are helping you enhance some of the typical things that you do like identification. Um, I, I can't say this about all the vendors simply because I just don't know, but I know that there's one online notary um, vendor that as part of the process, they have the signer who's at the other end of the camera take a cell phone and turn it to the outside of the room and do a 360 all the way around the room. You know, just to show the entire room that the person is in at the time. So while there's probably no perfect answer to the concern that, that you've raised, I want you to know that there has been a lot of conversation about it, a lot of thoughtfulness about um, enabling notaries to do what they've always done and allowing them to feel like they're doing it to the notary's satisfaction. And at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> let's remember the fundamentals are still the same. You all have the power to stop a notarization if you feel that it should be stopped, right? And so that does not change with a different method of notarizing. You still have the power to do that. So it's going to be different, but you'll still be able to make the assessments that you need to make to feel whether or not you should proceed. And so I, I really do appreciate the question. Do you know that, that helped a little bit? Can you take one more? Why don't, why don't, uh, what I would suggest is let's try to plow on a little bit, and we're, we'll try to kind of get through it, and then hopefully we'll have even more time. And I, I just want to clarify one thing. So Kathleen, when we're talking about an electronic notarization, there still has to be physical appearance in the same room. So that's the same as with a traditional paper-based notarization. Mm -hmm. So if you're performing an electronic notarization, just means that the documents are on your computer rather than printed out and you're doing a manual stamp and sign, the signer still has to physically be in the same room with you. The only time we're talking about a two-way audio-visual appearance is when we're talking about online notarizations. Yes. So I just wanna make sure that's really clear to everybody. You still have to have the standard physical appearance for an electronic notarization. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay, and we talked about the effects. You, you've heard that. It, so, again, notary as an independent witness to the events of the notarial act and your completed notarial certificate. It's evidence taken on its face to be factual unless it's rebutted. And, and I always like to remind you how powerful your certificate is for relying parties. So, um, electronic notarization, same effect that you've always created with notarization. Um, an e-notary's basic tools, and this may answer um, some of the questions that we've, we've had come up. Um, and this is a very high level um, thought about the types of tools that you'll need. But obviously you're gonna need some kind of web-ready device. A, you know, a desktop computer if you have people coming to you um, physically and, and that's how you wanna do it, or a laptop if you're going to them, or a tablet or a phone. Something that will enable you to access the internet. You're going to obviously need web connection to perform electronic notarizations. Um, you know, if you can, particularly if you are in a situation where the only access is through public Wi-Fi, 
you know, obviously you don't want to perform sensitive transactions on an open public network. So you do want to look into, and this, this speaks to, to what you were remarking on, some of the costs being a little higher. You want to look into um, figuring out how to have things like a virtual network that basically adds that layer of privacy protection to your um, internet signal when you're, when you're performing um, electronic notarizations and you're not on, you know, like a secure um, environment like maybe your, your home. Uh, your notary e-signature and seal, that's yet another tool that you'll need. Um, it can be stored on your web ready device. It can be on the cloud or it can even live, if this is an option for you, and it, in, in those cases it will be, it can live on the server of the e-notarization vendor that you work with to provide these materials and provide the platform for you. So there are different ways of, of that being handled, but again, you will need um, a means of making your electronic signature and your electronic seal. And finally, your journal. For a traditional notary, whether you're performing paper or electronic notarizations, there isn't a specification about the, the style of the journal. It can be paper or electronic. But one thing that's important for an electronic journal for a traditional notary, if you use one, it does need to be capable of being backed up and being able to produce a, um, a journal record when one is requested. Uh, for an online notary, there's no option. It will be an electronic journal. And generally, it will be one that is part of an electronic um, remote online system. And one thing that's important about the, the journaling for an online transaction is not only will it capture information that correlates to a typical journal entry, but it also needs to capture and store an, a recording of the audio video session that you have with that signer. So obviously we're talking about, you know, a different, different type of, of journaling for online. And so we, we keep talking about technology solutions, vendors, these people who are making these applications and these technologies that enable you to do this. Um, you can get everything you need in one place. Um, you can have an e-notarization platform. Um, you know, pardon me, first of all, these are the components of what you need. A, a platform for performing the e-notarization. Essentially, where you go online, when you're going to perform that electronic notarization. You need your um, electronic e-signature and seal, the journal, the remote notarization platform. We, there are technologies out there that combine all of that into one package. So um, that's important for you. It keeps you from having to go out and hunt and peck and put it all together. Um, technologies can be desktop applications that you would um, download to your desktop. They can be web apps. And we, gosh, we all use web apps all the time. You just go out to a website, you log in, and then you're accessing what that website can do, the platform that it has. It can also be a mobile app, because some of these technologies are um, able to be used on things like a, a, an Apple uh, phone, an iPhone. So generally, the technology solutions offer you the opportunity for one-stop shopping, and there are different ways that you can access and use the technology. So, Brianna, I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, oh, yeah. Before we get started on that, can I ask how you get your seal and your signature online to be used for electronic notarization? I'm, I'm glad to address that. If it helps. The question was how, you know, before we go in, how do you get your electronic signature and seal for an electronic notarization. Um, in many cases, for instance, if you use a, a vendor, like we keep talking about, these, these folks who have created these kind of all-in-one solutions, they already know how to make um, a, a seal and a signature that complies with the standards of a state like Texas that has enacted this. So are they often combined like an electronic notary place and an online place and they'll like do both and you can just pick and choose which one you're going to use? I mean, is it like a, are we talking two different types of services out there, one that does electronic notarization and one that does online? The answer 
a sort of yes and no. Remember that whether you are doing it as an electronic notary with the physical presence of the signer, or you're acting as a remote notary and the person is appearing by audio vi video, it is still an electronic notarization. So, but yes, there are different technology requirements applied to the online notary. So you, and I think that for, tell me if this is correct, for an online notary, they can only use that. For an online notary, you can only use the electronic signature and seal as an online notary for online notarization. So then, yes, if you want to do both styles of electronic, both in presence and the online, you have to have one electronic signature and seal for the in presence electronic notarizations and one electronic signature and seal specific to the online performance of, of those. So, it be the vendor that will take care of getting your, your signature and seal. It, 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 exactly. It, 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 and the, the comment was that essentially it would be the vendor who would take care of that. And you'll hear more about that, I think, from, from Liana. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start out with some information on how do you become an online notary. In order to become an online notary, you have to first hold a regular notary commission. You cannot hold an online commission separate and apart from your regular notary commission. Once you apply and are commissioned as an online notary, the term is going to be the same as the term for your traditional commission. So if you have, if you're currently commissioned and you have one year left, on your regular commission and you apply and are commissioned as an online notary, your online commission is going to expire in one year along with your traditional notary commission. You can then reapply to be a traditional and then reapply to be an online notary. But you have to first be commissioned as a regular notary or traditional notary before you can have that online commission. You're gonna to have to, when you go onto the Secretary of State's website, you have to apply online through the Secretary of State's website. And when we're done here, I'm gonna show you our website, and I'm gonna go through and show you where you can find links to the statute, links to the rules, and where you can apply to become an online notary if you want to. But when you apply, you're gonna to have to have some information. You're going to have to have your notary ID, which shows us that you're already commissioned, you're gonna to have to have your digital certificate. I'll talk about that in a minute. You're gonna to have to have a copy of your electronic seal. Um, there is a $50 fee to apply to be an online notary. There is not a separate bond requirement. The bond that you have with your regular notary commission is gonna cover you um, or apply to your online commission as well. Now there was a question yesterday as to whether if you have E&O insurance as a traditional notary errors and omissions insurance, whether that is going to cover your acts as an online notary as well. And that's something that you need to talk to your insurance provider about. Um, they may have rules or restrictions about whether or not it's going to apply to any online notarizations that you may perform. Okay. This is where it gets technical, and please hang in there with me. Um, what you have on this slide, these are the minimum requirements for a digital certificate, okay? And when I'm talking about a digital certificate in the context of an online notarization, that's how you sign a document, okay? When you're completing your notarial act, and you're completing your notarial certificate, and you're ready to sign it, you sign the document by attaching your digital certificate. And that digital certificate is gonna have an image of your signature. It's recommended that it look like an image of your wet signature, wet ink signature. Um, but that's how you're gonna sign it. And it looks like you're signing the document. But what a digital certificate does, what the PKI and the X509 compliance does, is when you attach it, there's data underneath it, okay? And that data can tell that after you attach your signature or your digital certificate, it lets you know whether or not there have been changes to the document, okay? So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about PKI compliant and X509 compliant. That's something that the vendors can tell you whether or not they can do for you. So I don't think it's necessarily important that you understand the intricacies of what PKI technology means, 
But you need to, when you're going to talk to a vendor, you need to tell them, these are what Texas's requirements are. Can you do this? And, okay. and one comment I want to throw in is these vendors and, and folks who provide these technologies, they are deeply interested in this. And there are states that have authorized electronic notarization that have technology requirements for years. And so generally, this is, this is old hat to them. And the point of sharing it all with you is so that you know the language to speak to them when you go and you, and you want to ask if they can meet the requirements of, of Texas statute. So when you have your digital certificate, just like with your seal that you would use for paper-based vendorization, your digital certificate needs to stay within your exclusive control. So you can't share a digital certificate with somebody else as a coworker, okay? That digital certificate needs to be within your exclusive control at all times. You need to make sure that it is current when you use it. So when you go out and your digital certificate, it has to be issued by a third party. You cannot create your own digital certificate, okay? So you're already gonna go out and you're gonna have to talk to a third party in order to get your digital certificate. So these are the things you can talk to them about. But when you get your digital certificate, you need to make sure that it's current when you're using it. Depending on who you get your digital certificate from, the length of validity before they expire will differ. Sometimes it's for a year, sometimes it's for two years. Somebody yesterday said that you can get it for the length of your commission. But you need to make sure that if it's not concurrent with your online commission, if it expires beforehand, that you're on top of it and you're renewing or getting a new digital certificate when that old one expires, okay? If your digital certificate is lost or stolen, you need to notify local law enforcement and you need to notify the Secretary of State's office. Okay, I'm not gonna go into this in depth because you guys have heard this multiple times today, but the same core fundamentals apply to an online notarization that apply to a traditional paper-based notarization or a traditional electronic notarization. It's still all the same key elements, there's just some little differences, and we're going to talk about those specifically. For an online notarization, personal appearance. For a traditional notary, you have to personally appear. They have to be in the same room as you, right? That's for a paper-based or a traditional electronic notarization. The signer, when they come, they're going to be in the same room with you. For an online notarization, they can appear, or they're going to appear before you via a two-way audio-visual communication. So how many of you have ever FaceTimed or Skyped with somebody? Most of you. So when you are FaceTiming with somebody or you're Skyping, you have their, they appear on the screen before you, whether it's your phone or your computer, and you can see them in real time. You can talk to each other in real time. It's the same concept when you have this, whatever platform you're gonna use for your online notarization. There needs to be continuous and clear, a continuous and clear feed so that you can see each other during the whole act, that you can see and talk to each other, okay? But that's personal appearance for an online notarization, is appearing via the two-way audio-visual secure link. Oh. <laughs> so performing the notarial act. As an online notary, you're authorized to perform all of the same notarial acts as you would under your traditional commission. You can still do acknowledgments and protests and juror acts. You don't have any greater or lesser authority. Your fees, they're charged. So you can charge as an online notary, you can charge the same fees that you can for a traditional notarization Plus, you can charge $25 for the online notarization. So if you're performing an acknowledgement for somebody, you get to charge the $6 for the acknowledgement, and then you can charge $25 for the fact that it's an online notarization. So the total for that acknowledgement is going to be $31 that you are authorized to charge. Again, just with our regular fees, it's a, that's your maximum. You can always charge less than that, but you can't charge more than that. Identifying the principal. Just like with the traditional notarization, there's three ways that you can identify the principal. You can personally know them. 
You can, they can be introduced through the oath of a credible witness, or they can be identified by use of a credential. And if you're gonna use a credential, it's the same credential requirements as for a traditional notarization. It still has to be a valid identification that's issued by the US state or federal government. It needs to include the signature and photograph and picture of the individual that's appearing before you. But with an online notarization, if you're gonna identify somebody with a credential, you need to go through two processes called identity proofing and credential analysis. And again, these are processes that are provided by a third party. With identity proofing, it's the third party that's using public and proprietary data sources to collect information about the principal and then ask them a series of questions that they need to answer in order to confirm that they are who they say they are. So how many of you have ever uh, applied for a credit card or a loan online and you are asked a series of questions about where you lived when you were in second grade or what was the name of your first pet or something like that. Questions that theoretically only you should know the answer to. Yeah, most of them, okay? So that's the same sort of thing that's called dynamic knowledge-based authentication. It's the same sort of thing that's happening with the identity proofing, okay? So they are going to be asked a series of a minimum of five questions and they're gonna have two minutes in which to answer those questions. In order to pass or succeed and continue on, they need to answer 80% of those correctly, okay? If they can't do that, they get one more try, and on that second try, at least 60% of those questions, or if you have a five question um, quiz, at least three of those have to be new questions the second time around they still would have to, the second time around, get at least 80% in order to continue on, okay? If they can't pass it the second time, then they're locked out and they cannot proceed with that same online notary for at least 24 hours. <laughs> Once they successfully pass identity proofing, then it goes on to credential analysis. Again, credential analysis is performed by a third party and it is a third party using data sources from the issuing authority, so whoever issued the identity, the credential, and they're pulling information about that credential. Technology, placement of information, um, sizes of the photograph, stuff like that. Right, basically the, the technology is looking to see if the credential being presented has the correct attributes that that credential should have. If it's a state of Arizona driver's license, and we all know about real ID um, compliance with driver's licenses, that technology can verify whether or not that appears to be a validly issued credential. So with once credential analysis is through, if they pass it, then you're going to get an authenticity output, the notary is, okay? Up to now, when the signer is going through this, they aren't necessarily in contact with the notary yet, okay? If this is taking place via a, a platform or a system where they're gonna log in and they're gonna have to go through identity proofing and credential analysis. You're not necessarily involved in that part of it, okay? Once they pass that, then they are then connected with you, the online notary. And you're going to do a visual comparison of the credential that they have compared to the person who is appearing before you. So just like you would in a traditional notarization, you're gonna look at their ID, they're gonna show it to the camera, or they will have scanned it in as part of credential analysis and you're gonna have an image of it, and you're going to compare the picture to the person that appears before you on the camera, okay? So you're gonna do a visual comparison. So completing the notarial certificate. After they're properly identified, you're gonna go through and you're gonna perform your notarization, you're going to do your notarial ceremony, and when it's time to do your notarial act or your notarial certificate, there's gonna be certain information, and it's all right here, as to what has to be included in your notarial certificate. I'm not gonna read it to you, but really the only difference between an online notarial certificate and a traditional notarial certificate is the fact that you have to have a statement that this was an online notarization, okay? Just like the Secretary of State's office has provided you all with your educational materials, sample certificates for a traditional notarization, 
we've got on our website sample language for a online notarization, sample certificates for an online notarization. So remember, you guys are not supposed to be the ones that are choosing what the appropriate certificate is to go with a particular notarization. That's the responsibility of the principal that's appearing before you. But you can say, here's some options if they are, if, and let them pick, okay? You can have the options available for them. It is your responsibility, however, to make sure that the information that is contained within the notarial certificate is accurate, all right? If the county is wrong, you can go in and change that. If um, the language that was given before you was for an acknowledgement, but really they are asked, they want you to do a juror app, then you need to change the language to make sure it's consistent with the notarial act that you performed. And then the final step is going to be to attach your digital certificate. And remember, that's how you sign your notarial certificate. You're going to attach your digital certificate. And if your electronic seal is not incorporated already into your digital certificate, you're also going to attach your electronic seal to the document. And that is you stamping and signing the notarial certificate for an online notarization. Okay? Keep doing that. Is there a question? Yeah. Yeah. So, to do the online notarization, they're going to scan the document in that they're going to want notarized for you to attach the certificate to it, or? Yeah, so it's either going to be scanned in or you're both going to be using the same platform and they will just upload a document to the platform. It's going to appear before you and then you'll talk to them during the notorial um, ceremony and then you'll, uh, you'll attach your digital certificate and seal to the document electronically. Okay, so it will remain an electronic document. Exactly. At that point. exactly. With an online notarization, you're never kind of like making it paper-based. Okay. And I have a quick question. Is everyone comfortable with what we mean by a platform? It's a place online that the parties go to conduct this business. You know, so there, it's basically going to be a website, a web page. Everyone who's participating is an authorized um, signer and you know, or the notary, and they have login credentials for that particular transaction, so that only the authorized parties are getting in. The catch-all phrase for that is a platform. I just didn't want to lose anybody in the, in the nomenclature over that. I, I had a question about that also. Um, there seem, I've hesitated to jump into it because there's, there's platforms being developed every day. And it, it's kind of like back in the, the beta VHS time. Who's going to come out on top? I'm, I'm sorry, can you hold the, the device? There you go. Yeah, I, I said, I've hesitated to jump into this because the platforms are kind of coming out every day. And it kind of goes back to beta or VHS. So who's going to come out on top and, and, and what is Texas kind of leaning towards? Or and even nationally, if we have to be in Texas, can we do notarizations in Washington or Virginia or wherever? Yeah. And they're going to have a different platform. So two parts to that. So again, when Texas, when we developed our administrative rules as to what are going to be the requirements for an online notarization, our goal was really to say, hey, these are the requirements, and then there's going to be vendors out there that are able to fulfill those. So in terms of like which is going to win, I, I don't know that there's an answer. As long as they are going to, whatever vendor you decide to go with is going to meet those minimum requirements, you should be good. I, I think it means that you'll have choice. There are going to be enough choices out there and enough vendors that will meet the requirement that you can find the one that feels right for you. And, and it's just like any other opportunity to make a choice um, out there. And then the second part of that question was, is going to transfer to wherever your principal is located. Um, 
And the question is, that's the response, I mean, the answer is that's the responsibility of the principal to determine. Um, there's, there's always gonna be differences in the notorial laws and regulations of various states. Like, we get stuff um, in our office that sometimes is notarized in California, and we need it verified in the notarial certificate that they give us from California, it never meets our requirements. So that doesn't work for our office. It's the responsibility of whoever the principal is, whoever is asking for that notarization, to make sure that the notarial act that is being provided in Texas is going to be sufficient for wherever it is that they need to use or record that document. Okay? Yeah. This is question. Yes, ma'am. I just got, I'm trying to understand, when you say platform, would Google Docs be something that you're referring to? Where, you know, where two different people can be in the same document? Would that be? It's the same concept, yes. And you know, in other words, it's, it's where multiple parties can come together to do, to carry out their role in the transaction. It's almost like a, a, an online meeting room or an online signing room. And but so that's what we mean by, by platform. Right, but you're gonna also, it needs to be a secure platform. Um, there's requirements as to who's gonna have access to the documents. Right. So, right. and that's again why you're gonna have to go out, I mean, this is not something where you can just go and sort of pick it up and create your own system because there's requirements as to, you know, you have to use a third party for a digital certificate, you have to use a third party to go through and do the identity proofing and credential analysis, and there are system requirements, minimum system requirements that you're gonna have to meet. Um, and so that's why there there's a multitude of people who are out there who have the technology already created in order to be able to do an online notarization. So. So if we're hired by uh, a signing company or a title company or whatever, um, and they have a platform, because we're ultimately using the documents that they're providing us. So if they have a particular company, third party company that they're using and that they utilize as a uh, way of completing this, so we just have to kind of find out who they use as a starting point, and that they're okay in the state of Texas. If they're approaching us saying, are you okay or interested in doing e notarizations? Right, I think you just need to be aware of who the company is that's providing that system and make sure that um, they have made reasonable representations that they are capable of meeting the minimum requirements in Texas. She basically asked the same question I was. How do we how do we do more than one platform, or do we have to have more than one platform, or do, can we tell them which platform we're using? And I, I think that's a business decision that you're going to make with the principal. If you if there's one that you're using and you're comfortable with, and you say this is the system I'm going to use, and they can choose to do that or not. Real quick, I just want to clarify. So I know, like Virginia, if you're online notar uh, notarized in Virginia. You can actually notarize them, I think, every state. Mm -hmm. Is it the same for Texas? So in Texas, you as the online notary, you have to be in the state of Texas at the time you are performing the online notarization. The person who is appearing before you via the two-way audiovisual, they can be anywhere in the world, okay? You as, the notary, you as the notary have to be in Texas. The person appearing before you can be anywhere. The filing, it does not have to be recorded in Texas, but again, if it's not gonna be recorded in Texas, um, it's always the responsibility of the principal to make sure that it's going to meet the requirements in their home state. Okay, um, I'm gonna, let me just get through, just uh, briefly, I'm gonna go through as fast as I can some of this information, but I just wanna make sure that you have it and you're aware of it, but I will not leave this room until I have answered all the questions that you guys have. I want to make sure that you have the information that you need in order to make that decision as to whether or not online notarization is going to be right for you. Okay? So let me get through recording the notarization. Just like a traditional notarization, you have to record an online notarization. It has to be done electronically. And it's going to have to, your electronic log is going to have to include a lot of the same information that your traditional log is going to be where it was, the type of document, who appeared before you, that information. It's also going to include a recording 
of that audio visual, an audio visual recording of the notorial act, okay? So that recording needs to include your confirmation that the principal has completed identity proofing and credential analysis, or if you identify them through personal knowledge, a statement that I personally know the principal is hearing before me. It needs to have a visual confirmation of the identity of the principal, so that can be done through um, the visual comparison of the credential. And then finally, it needs to include the actual notorial act that happens, the attaching of the digital certificate. That all needs to be included as part of your um, record book. You need to keep both an original and a backup of that record book in a secure manner for a minimum of five years from the date of the notarization. You can have a third party keep track and hold on to that electronic or store that electronic record for you. However, you need to make sure that it's you have exclusive use or exclusive control over that notarial record and you need to make sure that should your contract with that vendor ever terminate, that the records will all be transferred to you. Just like with the traditional notarization, it's your record book, you're the one who's responsible for maintaining it, providing copies of it in circumstances where that's required. Okay, your online system requirements. If you're interested in an online notarization, you need to go take a look at section 87.71 of the administrative rules. That's going to provide a list of the minimum requirements for your online system. And that is going to be the two-way audio visual um, feed that you're going to have. If you need to make sure that you've got a continuous feed, that there's sufficient clarity in the, um, that you can see and hear the principle, that you can perform, perform credential analysis, that there's a clear enough image for credential analysis, that it's a secure system. Um, those are the things that are, you're gonna need to have. But again, when you're going to talk to somebody about a platform that you might want to use, 87.71 of the administrative roles is gonna have sort of a list for you to go through and talk with them about. Changes after commissioning. I'm going to quickly mention that for all notaries, traditional, online, everybody, if your address changes, the address that you have on file with the Secretary of State's office that you put on your commission, your application for commission, if that changes, you have to notify the Secretary of State's office within 10 days. Kevin's gonna talk about that again in the next presentation, but it's important enough that I'm gonna say it again. That's the address that our office uses to communicate with you. That's the address that is published online, so if somebody wants copies of your record book, that's the address that they're gonna send it to. If, heaven forbid, there is a complaint filed against you, that is the address that we're going to use to communicate with you about the complaint. So it's really important to update the Secretary of State's office if that address changes. Similarly, if, you are going, if your name changes and you're going to notarize under a name other than which you were commissioned, you have a responsibility to update the Secretary of State's office. You're gonna to need to get an amended commission. You're gonna to have to get a bond rider and you're gonna to have to get an updated seal. For online notaries specifically, like we talked about before, if your digital certificate or electronic seal expires while your commission is still valid, you need to obtain a new certificate and a new seal and you need to provide a copy of those to the Secretary of State's office within 10 days of that change. Finally, just a couple of changes to the administrative rules. Um, they were revised on August 19th of 2018 following the implementation of the online notarization. Um, we're going to... August 19th, 2018, the notary rules were updated. And so a couple of changes, they were restructured, reorganized, there were some additional sections added in there. But I think one of the key things to understand is there was some new nomenclature used. If the rules apply and talk about a traditional notary, then that's going to be a, somebody who holds a traditional commission for paper-based or electronic notarizations. If the rules refer to an online notary, those are specifically people who are commissioned as online notaries. And then if the rule just refers to a notary or notary public, that is everybody. That is both traditional and online notaries, okay? Um, 
I think. Where's the can I have that? Yeah, why don't you take the lava with you? Well, I'm going to just really quickly, for anybody who's interested, I'm going to just quickly show you where you can apply to be an online notary on the Secretary of State's website, and then um, I'll answer some questions while we're doing that. You're always going to go under Notary Public and Statutory, down to Notary Public. Okay, so our rules, the laws that govern you as a notary, Chapter 406 of the Government Code. You should all go and read it. You should all be familiar with it. That applies to all notaries. Chapter 121 of the Civil Practice and Remedies Code applies to anybody who is doing an acknowledgement. So if you're doing acknowledgements, you need to be familiar with Chapter 121 of the Civil Practice and Remedies Code. And then finally, Chapter 87 of the Texas Administrative Code. These are the new administrative rules that became effective in August of 2018. And you can see here we've got general provisions, definitions. A new section that was added is notary procedures, and there's traditional and online notary procedures, and that sort of goes through the steps that you need to follow when you're performing those. Administrative action. Oops. Okay, good cause. Good cause are the reasons that the Secretary of State has to take action against your commission. So if you do one of the things that are listed in the good cause section, you make a false statement in your notary application, you engage in the unauthorized practice of law, these are a list of things that are good cause for the Secretary of State um, Office to take action against your commission. You should all go and read 87.31 of the administrative rules and make sure you're not doing those things. Okay, those are all bad things that you would be doing that can get you in trouble with Secretary of State's office. Including failure to maintain a current address. Remember, that's an important thing to remember. And then finally, specifically minimum requirements for online notarizations. Remember I talked about 87.71? Any online system that you're using needs to meet these requirements. So that's something you can take with you when you're talking to a vendor or a company that might be um, providing these services. Okay. Um, and then information that a company, a notary commission, or an online notary commission, that's where you're going to find access to those sample certificates. Okay. And then finally, if you're interested in becoming an online notary, you can go right here. Getting started as an online notary. There's information about before you apply. This is going to tell you about your digital certificate and your electronic seal, the information that you need to have already. And then the application process is going to take you step by step as to how to apply to be a notary. Okay. And finally, down here at the end, I've read it all, I know what I'm doing, I'm ready to apply to be an online notary, and this is how you do it. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Do you have your platform and your electronic seal and all that in place before you apply? You have to have your digital certificate and electronic seal before you apply. The application is going to require that you provide a copy of those to our office. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. come on. So 10 minute break, and then we'll be back to the last question, okay? Basically a question, can a notary without, a notary without bond become an online notary? The question is whether a notary without bond can become an online notary. I don't think there's any restriction against that. Okay. So another question. Uh, I know right I'm an online notary. I know right something in Michigan. People in Michigan have doubts about the validity of that document. Can they contact you directly? find out whether that, 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 that document is legit or be no doubt. So the question was whether if you have a 
if you notarize a document for somebody in a different state and they have problems with the authenticity or validity of it, can they, are you asking, can they contact me or can they contact you? They'll contact your office. They can contact our office and we can tell them either, yes, this individual was an online notary at the time of this notarization, or no, they weren't. But we can't make any recommendation or determination as to the validity of the document. Thank you.